Hello and welcome to Visual Studio Bytes. Today I'll be showing you how to troubleshoot TFS build server failure. Have you ever found yourself in this helpless situation where the build server has fallen over and you've tried every possible suggestion on the internet to bring the build server back but it just wouldn't work? Well sometimes before hunting around for solutions it is important to understand what the problem is. If the error message in the build logs don't seem to help then you can always go back and enable tracing on the build server to get more information and try and assess the root cause of the problem. So how do I investigate a build server failure? Well if nothing helps then you can enable tracing at the TFS server level or at the build server level or at the client level and um, see the trace events that are logged um, to help you point in the right direction of the failure. So let's uh, jump right into the demo. First I'll, I'll be showing you how to enable tracing on the TFS um, server. So I'll bring up my VM. Uh, this VM has the uh, is the TFS server. I'll click on start, go to run and bring up the um, INET manager. Um, expand, look for the Team Foundation server expand this, click on TFS, click explore. Now this brings up, um, this basically takes you to the directory C program files, Microsoft Team Foundation Server, um, application tier and web services. Uh, from here if you open up the web.config um, and search for the uh, key which is trace writer. Now you see that the value for this key trace writer is set to false. Change the value to true and then you can see this section which is system.diagnostics. Um, well the common say is trace switches each of the trace switches should be set to a value between 0 and 4 inclusive and the value of 4 is the highest um, level of trace that you can reach. So let's change the API value to 4, let's change the authentication value to 4, the authorization to 4, database to 4, the general to 4 and the general trace level to 4 as well. And press save. Now in order for the, um, the changes we've made in the config to take place, we can come back to the INET manager click on Team Foundation Server and click on Restart. Now the important point to note here is that uh, it, it is not recommended that you make any changes to the TFS production application server. This can have serious consequences and can also jeopardize the installation of your server. Um, Alright, so once we have restarted uh, the, the TFS server uh, and enabled tracing on the web uh, on the config file so now that we have enabled tracing, we need a tool to monitor the uh, the debug um, output that is generated. Um, so one of the free tools, tools that is available in the TechNet community is known as the Debug View tool. You can download it from the TechNet Microsoft uh, System Internal uh, Tools website. I've shared the link in my blog as well. Um, this really lets you uh, see the um, the debug output. Um, on the local system or any other computer in the network um, in, in almost real time. Now that I've downloaded the debug view, I will double click the debug view.exe, click run, make sure that from capture you select, you have the capture global uh, Win32 option selected. Now come back to Visual Studio and start making some changes uh, that you would normally make to reproduce the problem. Uh, like in our case I could go to the builds and queue up a new build and I can see that uh, if I come back to the um, debug view there have been all these uh, events uh, the, the trace information written and captured within the debug view. Now from here 
um, I could uh, save this to a log file or I could use the find button to look for anything specific. Uh, it, it's just worth performing a set of actions and then coming back and maybe pausing the um, you know the debug trace and then or taking a um, a cut of uh, what's been recorded and, and an analyzing it uh, rather than just going about making changes because because we've turned on the tracing to level four which means it will be recording uh, at the diagnostic level so too much information might get difficult to uh, go through everything then there you go right so as my build is working in the background it started to uh, lo lo log the events related to the build here as well right so that's uh, that's about how to enable logging on the TFS server how to enable tracing on the TFS server next we'll look at how to enable tracing on the uh, build server so I'll bring up the VM uh, where I have my build um, controller or, or your build agent installed. Um, go to the run prompt, open up C program files, go to Microsoft Team Foundation server. Within this, go to tools. Uh, now here, you might want to search for um, there we go. So we find the TFS build service host.exe.config. Uh, in case you don't find the exe.config, you can create this file as well. If I edit this file, I can see that um, the portion um, system diagnostics has been commented out. Um, so I can go ahead and uh, uncomment this portion in the file. And all that it is is enabling uh, the build server trace level, which is set to three. Um, it will generate the log at the location C logs uh, TFS build server host dot exe dot log. Uh, you need to make sure though that the build service service account has write permission to the directory C logs. Otherwise, it wouldn't be able to generate the log file. So I'll uh, copy this path and make sure that I create the folder c.logs. So I've created the folder c.logs. It's empty at the moment. I'll save the changes to the, um, the changes we made to the config file. After you make changes to the conf conf config file, it's important that you restart the build service. Uh, you will need to restart the build service in order for the new, new config settings to be picked up uh, by the build service. So I'll bring up my build services here and click on restart. And I can see that on uh, restarting the um, the build services, this uh, TFS build service um, host.exe.log uh, file gets generated in the log folder. I can see that uh, with the high level of tracing enabled, it does it has written uh, a lot of information as I queued up some new builds. Um, so yeah, so that was um, so that was showing you how to enable the um, tracing on the build server. Now um, uh, the last objective for us is to enable tracing on the client. To show you how to enable um, tracing on the client machine, I'll bring up my uh, dev VM, and first thing I'm going to shut down my Visual Studio, and navigate to C program files within that Visual Studio and then the common 7 IDE and I'll look up for the exe.config file yes and devenv.exe.config is the file that I'm after in case uh, this file is not available on this path for you you can very well go and create this file. Um, to modify this file, I will right click and click edit. This loads the file. Um, I see that the portion system dot diagnostics has already been uh, enabled and the tracing level has been set to 4 on the version control. Uh, the log file for this will be created at the location C log TF dot log. Uh, so in case um, uh, you don't have the C log folder, then it's probably worth creating that folder. 
Um, so once you make once you've made changes to the config file, you can close the config file and start a new session of Visual Studio. Now, when you do that, it should probably it will pick up the new uh, version of the config file and uh, let's make some changes to the version control. So let's get the source control explorer, perform the get latest operation, and maybe try checking something in as well. So I will try and check in some pending changes and click on check in right so I've, I've triggered an action uh, which should have picked up the config file and in turn caused uh, some tracing events to be logged in the folder C logs there we go so the tf.log uh, file has been created so uh, so this really winds us to the end of the session where we've seen how to enable uh, tracing on the TFS server, how to enable tracing on the build server, and how to enable tracing on the client. Now it's recommended that once you have reached uh, a conclusion uh, with what the problem is that you revert uh, the level of tracing uh, to a lower level because uh, it tends to take a lot of uh, hard disk space when these log files are being generated. So if you don't need tracing, turn it off. If you need tracing, turn it on. So um, some useful resources. Uh, this uh, link to download the debug view and this link uh, points you in the MSDN build forum. Um, thank you very much for tuning in uh, today's session. Today's session was presented by Tarun Arora. Uh, there are lots more videos available on the Visual Studio Bytes website. If you have any feedback, feel free to email me or drop me a line um, on my blog. Uh, thank you very much once again and looking forward to uh, you coming back and enjoying more videos.